Hey guys, welcome back. So now I want to show you how we can gracefully return JSON when we get errors like 404. So since this is a JSON only API, it makes sense to just send JSON instead of this HTML. So here in our app, so in our app itself, over here we can have an error handler. So we can have app, we want to call error handler so when you call error handler you need to give it the code of the error we want to handle or an exception so that means that if you had a very specific exception you want to be sending specific responses for you would add it but for us we want to handle when a user gets a, an http 404 not found and we are not handling it in that view in, in that view so if this is the error that the app is running into so just the same way we handle other routes we can define a function to handle this so we will call this handle 404 so we're just going to be returning a json response so we're just going to return jsonify and then we're just going to say obviously this is going to be throwing a 404 but since we are sending just one json we can as well explicitly define the type so it's going to be a 404 so whenever we create the handler function we also need to pass the exception so i'm going to pass e here so that can mean anything now if we come back to our app so i'm gonna refresh here i'm gonna try to go to this endpoint here so i'm gonna refresh it and now you can start to get json being sent back to the user so if we remove this and we try to access this you can see you can start to get html so if it's a, a just if it's a json on the api then it makes sense to you do something like this so we can also handle errors that come from the server so let's say the application is collapsing for some reason so if we want to handle like 500 level errors so here we can just handle server errors so http 500 internal server errors then we can handle those similarly by doing something went wrong please try again We are working on it <laughs> or something like that but whenever we are doing something like this the intent mostly is not to just tell the user this is happening of course that is good but we also would want to know that these errors are happening in our applications and we can find a way of handling this so the common case is to implement some error reporting or error logging so when an error like this happens we send it to like the admin of our app and the admin can go ahead and check the logs and can come and fix the error that originated into this error being thrown. So if we come back here, so to test this, obviously we need to have an error in the application. So I'm gonna go to the bookmarks and um, let me see how to create an error intentionally. So for example, on the slash route, I'm just gonna come in and say print A. So we don't have A anywhere, so this should throw an application error so if we go to api slash it's gonna be slash api slash bookmarks which is this one notice so slash api slash bookmarks so right now it is handling so right now this is catching it but if we remove something like this and we come back here make a call to the same endpoint so notice how the 500 error is not being called by our handler function and the reason why this is the case is because we are running into bug mode but notice when I come here and show you. Uh, so notice how. Notice when I come and change the Flask environment to production. So I'm gonna go to a Flask env and instead of us using development, I'm just gonna change it to production just for now. Obviously, we'll go, going to production, we need to change a lot of other things. But just to demonstrate the error, I'm gonna stop that and run back the server. So the server is on, so we can still run this. So you, now, if I refresh, you can see that we get something went wrong. And this is now handling the, the errors. So point to note here is our handler for the 500 will only work when we are running in production. So these kinds of errors don't get thrown to the user. You see, so these kinds of errors don't get thrown to the user. So yeah, so those are the basics of how to handle errors gracefully without scaring your user with a page that has a bunch of technical jargon. So thanks guys for watching. In the next one, we're going to be looking at how to document APIs. So if this video helped you, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next video.